uh, put it wrong into my um, to my calendar and I was out with my dog, but uh, we're back and ready to do some work. And so uh, to punish you guys a little bit for my own stupidity, I'm going to uh, grill you with rookend games. So here we have a position that... Um, that I'm working on for my upcoming book, Theoretical Rook End Games. And uh, here um, we need to figure out how uh, white can break through. So we need to break this winning plan down into two. Okay, guys, if you're gonna chat in the chat, please chat to me privately. Don't like gossip about moves. It just messes people up. Um, so we have to break white's winning plan down into two specific subparts. First, we have to accomplish step one, and then we have to accomplish step two. So the first thing I'd like people to do is take some time and think how we're going to try to win this game, what White's plan should generally be, and then once we've figured out what the plan is, then we have to figure out how to execute it. So let's do it step by step. And the first thing I want is for people to figure out what step phase one of White's plan is. Okay, so the people are struggling here a little bit. I'm seeing create a passed pawn. I don't think that's the right plan. Trade rooks. Great if you can do it, but good luck. Uh, keep black's king cut off on the eighth rank. Okay, fine. Um, I don't think any of these are actually that helpful for white. Uh, so when you say create a passed pawn, one thing to know is that whenever you're dealing with rook end games with all the pawns on one side of the board, um we uh whenever we have a network ending with all the pawns on one side of the board creating a passed pawn is almost never the right idea what you want to do is make a pawn weakness that you can attack and so here we actually have a situation where we can go for the g7 pawn so sepa here has an idea to play rook b8 rook g8 and go behind the pawns this is a very valid thing to think about uh, and then Kirk has another idea, which is to transfer White's king to f5, where it, which is a better score. So the first thing we have to think about here is between these two plans. Um, so do we need to bring the king to f5 first, or can we just simply go after the g7 pawn directly? So people are saying go for the pawn. Some people are saying go for the pawn, and some people are saying activate the king first. So we have some disagreement. I'd like people to actually start calculating some variations here and give me some lines. So for example, um, when you say g7 pawn directly, it's hard to activate the king now. We have all the time in the world. Give me an actual variation. If you want to go for the g7 pawn, give me an actual variation for how you expect the game could proceed. So, so nobody, a lot of people have said I want to go for the g7 pawn, um, but they're not thinking about how black is going to try to defend. So Andy has a line. This is what we're actually saying. You're saying rook b8 fails because of, um, because you're saying rook c3 check, king e4, rook c4 check, king f5, and g6 check, and you're claiming this is a draw. Maybe, but why don't I go to d4, maybe? Mm -hmm. No, d4 doesn't seem great either because of rook g3. Um, so, uh, yeah, this rook, this rook starting to give checks seems a little bit annoying, at least. Um, so I don't, I think that doesn't, Andy's line seems pretty good there. Uh, and then um, Kirk is suggesting another point, which he says uh, after rook b8, f6 rook b7 check and then king e6 does this make a draw i'm not sure it does so let's say we go rook takes g7 and your line is f takes e5 rook g6 check king f7 rook takes h6 and now the move rook takes g4 i can see a problem with this variation rook takes g4 is not happening but i suspect this this one is going to be very close actually i suspect this may now this should be winning we should go rook g6 and now the problem is, I think if black could just press the pass button here forever, he would make a draw, but I believe he has to move. Um, Kirk says there was f takes e5 a move ago. Yeah, this yeah this is totally over, right? My king will hide on h4. Yeah, so that wins. Uh, yeah, so I don't think black can play f6. This check on b7 is too annoying, but the rook c3 check is working fine. 
So um, one thing we could consider is starting with rook b7 check so that we got um, so that in the event of king to the back rank, we check again, and then there comes rook g8 when we get behind the pawn, and we've won a tempo. So for example, this line that Andy had given with here, check and king f5, we don't have g6 anymore and white wins. But of course, in this position, is black going to go back to e8? Are you saying that I cannot take the g7 pawn once the rook is on g8? So this line with, say, king e8, check, and here, you're telling me that I can't take this pawn? Um, I don't believe that. Rook c, but, so you can play rook c6 here, I guess, and now I cannot take this pawn, but I can go king e4, and then I can get ready for king f5, and once my king is on f5, I can play g5, and then white should win. And here, if black plays g6, we're going to end up with connected pest pawns, and that should win the game. So, um, so Adipandos, but yeah. So basically, here this move, King e, uh, this move, um, this move, King e six is very annoying, and uh, this means that we don't steal that critical tempo. So we need to keep thinking here. What are we going to do to actually build a winning plan? Because we can clearly see that Rook b seven check doesn't help on account of King e six. And of rook b8, I think black is just making a draw directly with rook c4, rook c3, and rook c4. Rook d3 and then rook d6. Why? Doesn't do anything. Yeah, so Kirk has a good point. Rook d3 is ill-advised because then black will play f6, and that will allow him to liquidate one of his weak pawns. So um, people are suggesting that we want to go rook d3, rook d4, and they come this way. And if you could do that, that would be great. But the problem with rook d3 is that black plays f6. So for example, I just had black play rook c4. If we play f6 here, rook b7 check wins the game with no questions asked, because if the king comes to the back rank, white can play e6. And if the king comes forward, we take this and a check on g6, and it's clearly all over. So um, that would win for white. But because black is... Uh, sorry, so this was uh, king e3, rook c4. Um, if white is going to play rook d3, then uh, with the plan of playing rook d4, now and only now uh, we can play f6 because white does not have a check on the seventh rank, and this buys black the time he needs to make an easy drop. So that doesn't... That doesn't work. We need to be a little bit more clever than that. So what should White be doing here, and what is our plan? So Owen Levine is saying king f3, f5, and then rook b7. So let's see what she means. So say you go king f3, and I go rook a4, and now you want to play f5? Um, we're just doing some rook end games today, Austin. Uh, so you want to play like this, Owen? All right, so when you play f5, you deny that square from your king. You also now have uh, more weaknesses. So, for example, what if I just immediately start attacking your e-pawn? This looks incredibly annoying. Rook b7, and we can bring the king back somewhere, I don't know where, something like this. And this seems like it should be very close to a draw. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't like this plan to play king f3, f5. You'll leave the weak pawn on e5 and you deny your king the f5 square. So Arvind, you're saying rook b6, keeping the check available and stopping f6. Um, so rook b6, it's not like black is threatening f6. He's not. He only can play f6 once we, um, once we have brought the rook to the defense. So Kirk says, how about getting black skin to the 8th rank followed by e6? Is this the plan? I don't, what do you mean? Like with the rook on the 7th rank or to win the g7 pawn? Or what do you want? I mean, if we can play rook b7 check and force king e8, then e6 will definitely win, but black's king will go to f8. So that doesn't seem so easy. Um, but so, and someone's also giving me rook b6 to d6 and then d4. But the problem is the second your rook touches the d6 square again, I'm going to play f6. Uh, which is going to ruin your day. 
Um, so, okay, so Andy has a better idea. Andy, do you want to share with the class what you came up with? Oh, I thought Rook B7 check. Because? Um, you want to force the king to the back rank. I guess if king E6, you can go like king F3 or something. And then I start checking you. Uh, king E4. Check again. King E3. Santa, aren't you going to lose the G-pawn somewhere? Oh, um, maybe. King E3 and then... No, but I can't give you this check because Rook G3 is mate. But okay, let's say I just wait now. I don't think this helped you very much. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're close, but we'll get there. So Ryan says rook b7, rook b6. But the problem with rook b7, rook b6 is, again, the second you touch this square, I always have f6. So you can't get to the d file so easily. You have to be a bit more creative than that. So there's an important detail that we need here. So Kevin has the line. Um, you got rook b7 check and then rook b8. But what if I, and after rook c3 check, you have king d4. But what if I get the checking distance first before you can, um, before you get to g8? The problem is I think this is a draw. Um, Idea is saying we can go rook c3 and rook g3. Yeah, that's probably fine too. But I suspect rook a4 also is a big problem. Um, okay, so um, so hang on. We have an interesting one from Kirk. So you're saying check king d5, and this is too active. Yeah, that seems right. But my, I believe actually, funnily enough, I actually think king d7 is making a draw as well. For example, when you play rook g8, there's this line here, you take this pawn, and now I start checking you. And this king has nowhere to hide. The only square would be uh, h4. Everywhere else, you just lose your stuff. But I remembered looking at this in some detail, and I believe in this position, my understanding is we attack this f pawn. And black should be very careful. I believe rook f3 loses and rook a4 is a draw, but let me just confirm that with the machine. Rook a4, I'm 90% sure is a draw, and rook f3, yeah, rook a4 is the draw. So the point is that um, when we go rook a4 here, white's only chance is f5 check, and on uh, rook takes f7, we could have a position like this one with black's rook on f3, and so then, we go like say rook a1 here and then if white goes here if we had this position with the rook on f1 i think white would win because here we can make king g5 and this is just fine and so austin says what rook before check i think king f3 is fine right um as far as i can see Rook b3, king g2, or no, king g2, there's rook g3. So, and if we do this one, yeah, this is, no, this is, this is a draw. And then here, if f6, we can go check and rook g3. Um, rook and rook g1, yeah. So, um, so, but the point is that in this position here is that now black makes a draw with king g5, I think is the key point. Um, is that right? Not sure. I don't know. I just know that there is some weird reason that you have to play rook f4 and rook f3 loses. Anyhow, the big point is that when we're going after this pawn, what we're seeing is here, white got like the best possible version he could get. He even managed to take this pawn before black even started checking, but still that wasn't good enough. The problem was this king had nowhere to hide. So returning to the original position that we were discussing here, 
what we really should be doing is breaking this plan down into a step-by-step -step procedure. And I think step one clearly has to be we need to get this king to f5. Once that king is on f5 and he's totally safe from any harassments, then and only then we can aim for some kind of rook back around behind the pawn on g6, g8, and you'll never have to worry about your king getting harassed. You don't have to worry about black's king reaching the e6 square. So what we eventually need to do is get our king to f5. But that proves to be easier said than done, because what we can see is the king is currently cut off along the fourth rank, cannot touch the e4 square. And everybody over and over again, I've seen so many iterations of rook b d3 to d4, rook b5 to d4, every, everyone keeps on trying to put this rook on the d-file. The problem is the second the rook touches the d-file, black is going to play f6 because you will lack a check. So what we need to do first here is figure out how do we get this king to f5 without allowing black to trade the pawn by playing, off, by playing f6. And this is a little tricky, so let's figure out what we should do. Yeah, so Austin, that's right. This this normally four versus three is a draw, but here white got a very nice pawn structure. In fact, I believe this position actually would still be a draw if black's pawn were on h7. Um, but uh, our goal now is to get our king to f5 without letting black play f6. And if we can do that, then we'll regroup at that moment. But that's the first step. So how do we how do we get there? So Adipanda is saying king f3 to play then f5, rook e3, rook e4. But the problem is once you have played f5, then your king no longer has that square uh, and it will never find safety. What type of thinking method do I use to solve this? This is pure science, guys. This is logic and deductive reasoning. Chess is largely a subset of sports science and art and most positions have some combination no this one is just straight science so there's no counterplay there's no nothing you just need to logically reason this out so um andy is saying rook b7 king e6 rook b6 king e7 king f3 but then after king f3 i play i don't know rook a4 or something so he goes, F5 is absolutely the wrong plan for white. If you do this, you deny your king that square, and the g-pawn becomes a long-term weakness, and the d-pawn becomes a weakness, and black just brings his rook to the first rank or something, and you're not going to be able to keep everything sufficiently protected. You need these. You need to get your king to F5. Don't play F5 yourself. And this is not easy to do. We have to figure out how do we get the king to F5 without allowing black to play F6. It's logic. Okay, everybody's saying g5. Don't play g5. We don't want to touch these pawns. This is the key point of these rook endings with all the pawns on the same side. You do not want to make a pass pawn. That is not your goal. You don't want to trade stuff. You don't want to make a passer. Your goal is to make a weakness. What we have here is we have this weakness right here on g7. We, our goal is to take this pawn, and we don't want to trade anything. We want to just straight up take that pawn from black. The way we do that is step one is we get our king to f5, and then we're going to have to bring our rook to g8. Now that rook to g8 comes later. We'll get to that. But for now, all we need to to do is get our king to f5. So Ariane says king f3, rook c7, but why would black play rook c7? He's going to play rook a4 and keep the king cut off. After king f3, rook c7, king e4 should win. Um, so we need to figure out the plan to get white's king to, uh, to f5. Is the next person to say G5? Just stop saying G5, people. Never. No G5. We're getting distracted. We want to get the king to F5. That's this. We're not trying to play F5. We're not trying to play G. We want the king on F5. And people are like, this is the this is resistance. You you know that King F5 is the winning plan. It's hard to do. I get it. It's not easy to figure out how to pull that off. But keep people like, oh, this is hard. Let's try to do something else. But it's not. You need to just find the way. 
king f5 without allowing black to play f6. And it seems like whenever your rook touches the d file, black always plays f6. Um, okay, so Kirk, that doesn't work either. So a couple of people have given me this plan to play king f3 and then uh, the rook to e4. But the problem with that is I just give you a check on c3. And then your king has nowhere to hide. It's going to be cut off along the um, along the the third rank instead of the first. And if you repeat back with rook e3, there's going to be rook c4. All right. Guys, stop. Arvin, stop touching your f pawn. I don't know how many times I have to say this. Don't touch these pawns. We want the king on f5. Stop playing f5. Stop playing g5. This is not going to work. We need to get the king to f5. All right. And everybody keeps saying the same thing. All right. So logically, guys, the whole point is that whenever we're, our rook touches the d-file, it always feels like black has to play f6. So, realistically, in order to get to f5, we need to use the e4 square. We need to play king e4, king f5. In order for that to happen, we clearly need to put our rook on d4 to threaten the rook exchange and, cut, and stop black's rook from cutting us off. The problem is, it feels like every single time we put this rook on the d-file, every single time, it feels like black is always responding with f6. So what we need to do is figure out under which circumstances can we put the rook on the d file when black cannot play f6 in response. For example, let's think, imagine black plays f6. What move do we want to respond with to maintain the pawn structure? Yeah, everyone's saying this. We want to respond with e6. So basically, if black is playing f6, we know that we want to play e6 in response. So this tells us where should black's king be? Yeah, everyone's saying we want the king on the eighth rank. So, for example, if we give this check, now if black plays king e8, he stopped us from playing rook d7, but now pff, e6 and he loses on the spot. So he must play king f8, it seems like, if he wants to put the king on the back rank. And now we can play rook d7 with the point that we're ready for rook d4 and then to go king e4, king f5. And at this moment, he can't play f6 because we go e6. Right? This is a huge difference compared to all this stuff where people are going rook b6, rook d6. And Kirk says, but what if king e6? Good question. This is an issue. Here, this is a problem. So back to this position, back to the drawing board. We know what we want to do. <clears throat> we want to give black a check on the seventh rank. We then want him to return to the eighth rank, and then we want to go rook d7. So how do we orchestrate that and prepare that to happen? A couple of people are saying some interesting lines. Think about that and figure out what the problems are and then how to solve them. All right, Kyle, very good. You want to talk to us? You want to share your answer? So I think that we should like play king f3 so we can wait for the opponent to like move the rook somewhere and then we play rook b7. So then if king e6, then we can play f5. Yes, and because we have placed the king on the f3 square following king e5, we see that this pawn is safe. White's king can hide on h4, he will take g7, and white wins the game. So that's king f3 is a very nice idea because uh black must keep the rook along the fourth rank otherwise white gets king e4 directly and then when we go rook b7 check now king e6 loses so black must instead play king f8 and now and only now that this king uh has uh, ariana i'm sorry if i missed that I, the, people are spamming me i'm getting a million messages a minute most of them are not very smart uh so after rook b7 check king f8 um here, now and only now that we've forced this king to f8, we're no longer worried about f6. And white can bring his king back to e3, and black has to continue waiting. And eventually what happens is white finally gets rook d4 through. And uh, as a result, we get the king to f5. But there comes the next phase of the plan. So here, let's say king e4, king e7, king f5, rook b8, rook f4, rook c8. Let's get a position like this one. So we got our king to f5. Step one is complete. Next up is how do we actually win the game? Because what we see here is black is now 100% paralyzed. His rook can never leave the back rank if he ever plays, if he had played something like rook b6, it's all too easy. Check, check again, rook g8 and the game is over. So uh, black is now stuck 
for the rest of the game. His rook is on the back rank. That said, it's not that easy to figure out how to make further progress from here. And this is where we have to work on comparison and more calculation. Step one is complete, getting the king to f5. Honestly, that was the easy part. Now it gets harder. So wh what do we do? And how should we be trying to break through? Okay, so I'm seeing some interesting ideas. So some people want to play g5 with f takes g5. Some people want to play rook g1, g5, and rook takes g5. Some people want to play e6 to try to weaken the g6 square. All of these are sensible tries, and we have to figure out which one looks the most promising. Um, so to everybody who's saying e6, first thing you would have to do is put the rook on a5, but I think e6 is the wrong plan. And the reason is that here... Uh, yeah, of course, if you had put like the rook anywhere else and then played e6, there's always this annoying check and black makes a draw immediately. But if you play rook a5, for example, and then you go e6, the problem is not so much the... I don't think this is an issue. Now what should win? But what if black waits? I think you're out of luck here. This just looks like a draw. This is, yeah, I don't think you're going to make more progress than this. Your rook is stuck on the fifth rank, and that just should be enough to draw the game. And if you ever played g5, let's say something like this should be easily enough to make a draw. So, um, yeah. e6, I don't think, is the plan. We need to be thinking a bit more creatively. And try to calculate real variations, because especially if you're playing... Um, g5 so a lot of people are giving me some version of g5 h takes g5 and then f takes g5 you have to understand that as soon as that happens black is going to be able to bring the rook to the and start giving checks from behind so if you want to do something like that you have to give me a real variation because it will get very concrete very fast brian that's not very helpful um, black gets to move two, and then I don't know what you want after that if I take it. So Argon has a point, which is to play g5, take, take, uh, rook b1, rook a3, rook f1, and try to cut off the checks, but I don't think this you have nearly enough space. So for example here, what if I play this move? Uh, this looks like it should be a pretty routine draw h6 you want okay so that's your big idea maybe king e6 was dumb but i still have trouble believing so let's say I take it hmm. a little more annoying than i gave it credit for actually so nah, 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 nah. i'll give you this check H4, yeah. Even this is probably still a draw. I think F5 check probably holds this, but um also here, like I don't need to be so rushed. What if I start with rook h1? Uh this might be a better way. Um, this seems very close to a draw. Um yeah, I think this should be a draw. So you okay? Hang on. There's you're saying that in this line where I played, like okay, but so rook a three here. If king g four, I can go like king e six or something. This looks like a dead draw, I think. It's totally out of ideas. In fact, it's not even close. It's just a draw. But we're claiming that in my stupid line, um, after this check here in king e6, you're saying that in this line where I went f5 check and then king h4, king f7, that e6 would win? Are you sure about that? If I go king f6, and then e7, and uh-huh. That does seem to win. Oh, yeah. This one might still be... This one after h6 might be good, but I think... I have a very hard time believing this is lost. Uh, I think I should have... Um, 
I should have played Rook H1 first, but yeah, this one I think is a very routine draw. I don't think it's even close. Um, and Feng Min says if Rook H1, what if E6? I would think then this check should be fine. Um, this looks like a grande top loss. So uh, yeah, this is this is just a draw. So yeah, that didn't work. I think this whole building a bridge with that rook was not wildly helpful, and we need to think a little bit more carefully. But yeah, this is the, but this is the kind of thing you should be calculating because it should be pretty clear at this point we've made maximum progress. Like if you go back to the position we had some moves ago and I kept yelling at everyone, don't play G5, don't play F5, stuff like that. The reason for that was we could still build up our position by bringing the king to F5. Once we're at this point where the king is, um, where the king is on F5, then uh, if you sort of look at this position and say, okay, well, how do we build up our, what better square do we have for our king? There isn't really one. So it sort of feels like we've got the king all the way to f5. We've convinced black's rook to remain on the back rank because otherwise rook a8, rook g8 takes his pawn. So this feels like the time to break through and we have to plan for g5 under the right point. So hang on. So what was this line? Seven minutes, six minutes. All right, so guys, okay, so we're going back to this line with G5. Um, so let's say what, Rook C8, G5, doesn't really matter this stuff. Or, or you wanted to put the Rook on the third rank, right? So it's like Rook A4, Rook C8, Rook A3, Rook B8, G5, take, take. Here, and now what's this line, Arian, that you wanted to discuss? E6, but can't I give you this check? And G4, you say, and then take this. The three check in here. This is a draw for sure. Um, yeah, so H6, and now this is a draw without my F pawn, for example. Um, Think so. Let's say I give you this check, and then you go king. Oh, so, and you king g five. Yeah, but my point, Aryan, is this position is just a draw. Like if I go check, you take this pawn in here. Like this is a draw. There's not anything to be done. I don't think. Or oh, Kirtang, you can walk back this way and then play rook h three. That might actually work. Hang on. You guys are testing my patience with this line, but all right, let me think here. How am I going to? Can I always just take with the pawn on e6 and be like a little more pragmatic? But yeah, I can also give you a check on g1. I think basically everything should be a draw here. All right, let me put it this way. I think fe6 is going to be a draw. Rook g1 is going to be a draw. I'm pretty sure even king e6 is going to be a draw. I'm just going to put the machine on here. I think it's just dead almost no matter what we do. Yeah, so rook g1 draws, f5 draws, fe6 draws. My suspicion is even this draws, but no. All right, guys, so congratulations. You're getting trained by an idiot who in this position found the only losing move. Um, okay, so that's, that's a me problem, not a you problem. But yeah, like basically every legal move here is just a draw. This is not working. So we need to think a little more carefully than that. I'm curious if um, in this position, I don't even remember what it was, how this happens. Um, yeah, no, this is just a draw. So uh, let's think a little more carefully and look for other ways for what to try to come up with ideas. Okay, so Austin, you're saying try to get to g1 and then play g5 and take with the rook. So for one thing, I don't think that's great because I can go king f8. But another thing is I also can just very easily prevent that. Because keep in mind, the second you put your rook on the g file, for one move and one move only, or if you put it on f1 or h1 or anywhere around here, if you take the rook off of these three files, now my rook no longer has to remain on the back rank. So I can very happily play rook c6 and get ready to play... Uh, g6 check here, for example, which should just trade off all the pawns and make a draw immediately. Um, so, and then, okay, you can play rook a1, but now my rook comes back. So I don't think that bringing the rook to g1, f1, or h1, or any, anywhere around there is very helpful. So Kirk is saying, can we try rook a5, e6, king g6? This was discussed, but my point was here, I think that this does win, 
But uh, after e6, I can simply wait with rook b7, and there's not a thing you can do. White's rook is stuck on the fifth rank, and you can make no further progress. So, here. I'll give you guys a hint. G5 does not work here, but you should calculate it anyway and figure out why it doesn't work, and then once you've done that, hopefully you'll be able to find the right plan for white. So figure out why does G5 fail here. Look for various things white can try. Okay, you know what? We're going to do this a different way. I'm going to have... Does anybody want to volunteer to try to save black's position against me when I play G5? Okay, bye, Sabuher. Thanks for coming. Okay, Arvind wants to come. All right, Arvind, uh, you were the first one to say, so I'm going to invite you. Um, I'm going to just ask you to unmute. So, Okay, so Arvind, uh, you're just going to play the black pieces and show me how to make a draw. All right? Uh, H takes. Okay, so I'll go FG5. And then B1. All right, so I'll give you a check. Uh, king, probably F8. Okay, G6. Uh, look, F1 check. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Um, Not so easy, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Maybe F takes G6. Okay, an H G. Um, Rook B1. I guess I can give you this check, and now... If you go to g8, you get promoted upon, and if you mm -hmm. get to... Yeah, so if king g8, e6 should push the pawn straight through, I don't even need the king to help. And then if king e8, you lose a second pawn. So yeah, at this point, it's lost. Yeah. All right, so returning back to this position where white played g5. I'm telling you guys it's the wrong move. But as you can see, it's not that routine to just start giving checks and hope for the best. Like, white has ways to try to win the game. So what I'd like you guys to do is think about... How does black actually save the game in this line? And then maybe we can get another volunteer to try to do that, and then we'll see what white can do better. Um, so, uh, does anybody else want to try? All right, Austin was next. Austin said next. So, Austin, let me invite you, and then, uh, so hang on. Uh, Austin. Okay, so Austin, you are playing the black pieces. Try to make a draw with me. Uh, H takes. Okay. Chuki one. All right, Chuki. King of eight. Andrew six. Uh, Rook of one. Four. Rook E one. Okay. Rook F one. Rookie one, we win the pawn, right? Mm hmm. Uh, rookie five. Can you seven? Bye bye. Oh no, we're getting promoted. Gotcha. Darn it. Okay. Anyone else yeah. want to try? All right. Um, who is next? I think Andy was next. Uh, so Andy, you want to try? Uh, guys, spamming me is not going to make me more likely to choose you. Uh, so, Andy, I'm going to give you a shot, and then we'll see. So, so back to G5. All right, Andy, black to play. HG. Okay, I'll take it. Uh, 
Rook B1. Check. King F8. G6. Rook F1. Rook E1. Rook F1. FG. Rook E1. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> You've been tricked as well, yeah? Yeah. So, guys, this is important to understand. White's best plan here when it comes to these endgames is always, always, always fix a weakness. So what I kept trying to do to you guys is I kept trying to go G5, G6, and with this move, I'm fixing the pawn on G7 as a weakness. I'm ready for a move like Rook F7 check when your king is going to be forced to G8 to save it, and then my e-pawn will go. So this plan to play G5, G6 and force the weakness is important. Now, still, nobody has actually seen how black is drawing this game after I play G5. Let's see. Anybody else want to try? All right. Adi Panda. Okay. Um, Adi. Okay, so G5. Okay, yeah, HG. Okay, FG. I was thinking uh, G6. Well, I, this one's not going to work. Uh, F6. And then King E6. Okay, but this is dead. Hmm? What? This is dead lost. Like, check. Uh, King E5? And yeah, and here, but I mean, your king is cut on the side. Yeah. On the to six. You're clearly dead here. Alright, so Adi, that's not going to work. Anybody else want to try? Okay, Ariane, you want to give this a shot? Let's go, Ariane. Okay, Ariane, so I assume you want to start with F takes G5? Yes. Okay, I'll play F takes G5 back, and now you're to move. What would you like to play? Rook B6. Okay, but now I'll give you check. King F8. And yeah, I think now you're gone after G6, because you cannot stop Rook F7. I think. Yeah, and here. Rook. C rook C6. But you cannot. Okay, but here I have check and rook G8. But even without that, I can go check, and your king has to choose between letting my e pawn through or losing the g pawn. So here, black is definitely lost. All right, uh, Megan Paraguay. Sure. Um, here we go, Megan. What you got for me? So G5. After G5, H takes G5. Okay, FG. Rook B1. Okay, so we'll go check. Uh, King F8. G6. Rook F1. Mm -hmm. right. Rook F1, yeah, here. King E4. Uh, rookie one. Uh-huh. Rook F one. Okay. King one. Sorry, say that again. I mean, rookie one. Okay, but then here, this was the same thing that happened to Austin, and now you lose. Rook takes e5. Check. Rook takes e5. Mm -hmm. And h6 comes. Oh. Rook e8, I will take it, and h6. So, um, but, uh, Ryan Bay, is rook e5 possible after king e3? I don't think so. Isn't this just a pawn ending? Um, this is a pawn ending now. It's not even close, actually. Um, so I don't think that does it. Uh, so we need... Um, but I think Vihan had the right point. So Vihan, what were you going to... You had a point you wanted to share? Let me have you unmute. Uh, well, never mind, it doesn't work. 
What was your what were you thinking of before? No, okay, fine. Um all right, uh, so up, I'll give you guys an up to here where every, a lot of people got up to here and this is good. But the problem that you guys are facing is my king is eventually approaching the rook and starting to attack it. So what do we do in this position? This is the key spot. Now rook f5, rook f7 is upon ending and then you lose. Also rook f5, probably king e4 wins routinely as well. Even rook a8, check and h6 probably wins. So I think everything. Yeah, so Vihan sees this. The point is we take this one, and then at this specific moment, because White's king has been dragged too far away from that pawn, because I had to come all the way down to the third rank to approach this rook, now we go rook g1, and this is very important. If rook e1, my king just runs straight up the board. So rook g1 comes, and this forces White's rook back to a passive position, and now black makes an easy draw. His king just comes, and White's king will not find a safe square anywhere. It cannot run up to e6, and this is a draw. But what we have to realize is that did how much checking distance did black need? For example, let's suppose that in this position, instead of rook b1, he had played rook b2. Would this same drawing technique work? The answer is no, because let's say we give this check. At this point, we don't have another check to give on e2 because uh, the rook is too close. So uh, if, if we had played rook e2 check here, for example, king f3 wins. Uh, but we need to move rook e1 check, and then black is making a draw because he has enough checking distance. So yes, Kirk, this is the key point. How does white actually win from the start in this position here, let's say? Well, let's say, let's say this position. What does white do now? Anyone? Yes, Austin. So people are getting this. Um, the big point is white absolutely must place his rook on the first rank. Now, black is stuck. He still has to keep waiting on the back rank. He can't play rook b2, hoping to preemptively get ready for, for g5, because then we just switch plans and bring the rook to g8. So black must remain on the back rank. And then now and only now that we have taken the back rank under control, we play this move. So... If white is allowed to give rook a7 check and then g6 next move, he wins routinely with no discussion. Uh, and here, the point is black does not have the c1 square for his rook. So if he, tries, if he tries to wait, for example, like this, he just loses routinely to check in g6 and then basically play rook f7 check against more or less any legal move. Black's king will have to choose between losing the second pawn and letting the e pawn through. So black needs to get ready for checks from behind. And because he lacks that one rank of checking distance, here he has to go to the second rank instead of the first because white left his rook on a1, the first rank, before pushing g5. Now we can go for this check. And here we see that after this check, black lacks a sufficient checking distance and white wins. So it is very important that you put your rook, it doesn't have to be a1, it can be b1 or c1, but it is specifically you must put your rook on the first rank and then and only then play g5. And this is all logical deductive reasoning, and this is why rook end games are so hard. This is very simple, but it's also very difficult. Uh, you know, explaining the winning plan is easy, but finding it over the board, I mean, what do you think your odds are of winning this if you see it in a, if you get in a real game without having studied it before? This is why training theoretical rook end games uh, is uh, is very diff is very important. Uh, additionally, you get and you will never get end games ever when you're fresh. You will get end games when you are tired because end games come after the opening and middle game and after you've been playing for a while. So you will also get end games when you probably don't have that much time on your clock. So it's very important to study these things and understand the key themes because you can logically reason this position out. It can be done. This one I do believe uh, you should have memorized how to win when you have. I do believe that this particular one uh, with the king on f5 it is a theoretical rook endgame that you should memorize. But yeah, I did a I did a whole course on this on killer chess training, which you all should immediately sign up for. Uh, but no, seriously, it's um, I did a big course on rook endgames and killer chess training where I covered this one and a bunch of others. And I'm working on a whole book on theoretical rook endgames. It's dense and difficult stuff, but uh, trust me, it's worthwhile to study because you know, as we saw here, someone said we just spent an hour on this one endgame. Uh, first off, where we were figuring out how to get the king to f5, which was not that easy, and then secondly, on once the king is on f5, figure uh, figure out what to do about um, making further progress from there. All right, we got three minutes left before I have to leave and go hang with uh, this fellow down there. I don't know if you can see him, but he's just like that waiting to be played with. But uh, three minutes to uh, for general Q and A. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. <laughs> 